Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope, and today we are doing one of my all-time favorite things, which is opening up Kingdom Death Monster. Now, this game is so massive and so ridiculous that you don't really get the opportunity to open up a game like this that often. In fact, this is a copy that I bought maybe three or four years ago when I wanted to guarantee I had a second copy on hand just in case anything happened to the first. I, I remember when I pulled up to my apartment complex and saw uh, the title here, the core game, I knew exactly what that was. It was probably one of the most exciting moments in my gaming kind of experience, my gaming life that I've had. I saw it on the uh, delivery cart outside of the building and I knew, I knew that copy was for me. So this is gonna be an incredible unboxing video, but along with that, I also have a reboxing video coming. I'm sure you're gonna see some B-roll of it right now, just a very quick sneak peek, but I had a custom wooden Kingdom Death box made. It's been in the back of my shots for the last few weeks now, and I'm really excited to take this package fresh Kingdom Death and transfer it into my, uh, my ridiculous handcrafted wooden Kingdom Death box. So we'll have those two videos. Make sure you swing over there and check out our reboxing of Kingdom Death, the core game. Now, like all of our unboxing videos, I am very familiar with Kingdom Death. So as we bring out the components, I will be giving you more of an overview than a really unboxing. I'll be walking you through what different components are used for, what they look like, you know, how they interact with the game state as a whole. So stay tuned if you're just interested in Kingdom Death. Along with that, I want to go ahead and thank the Cardboard Wizard over on Etsy. Uh, they didn't know I was gonna give them sort of a plug or sponsorship in this video, but they were kind enough to send me a few of their handmade uh, trays, their organizer trays. And some of the most complicated parts of Kingdom Death for me are keeping the tokens, the terrain cards, all the cards you're currently using on the table organized and contained. So the B-roll I'm showing you right now is these items in action. Uh, they are handmade, 3D printed with a really nice finish on top of them. They've been sanded down so they're ready to go when they arrived here at my doorstep. Um, I just want to thank the Cardboard Wizard for sending these over. I will have a link to their Etsy shop down below. I'm definitely including these in my next kind of gameplay of Kingdom Death. And for those of you that are tuning in just wondering what else we have coming to the channel, we are working on gameplay. In fact, tomorrow I have another kind of core part of the community coming over. We're going to be playing a bunch of Kingdom Death together, getting a lot of it on camera so we can actually get you some gameplay, some fan-created content, some more Kingdom Death coverage. I also hope to do overviews and breakdowns and how to plays or how to integrate on each one of the core expansions. I have a lot planned for this channel. A lot of my headspace is focused around Kingdom Death. I, I just maybe care too much, so it takes me a whole lot longer to get this type of content out. Because I always want it to be slightly better or the best, or I want to design it or style it in a way that I would expect out of the community. And that does mean that the time, energy, effort that gets put into producing Kingdom Death videos uh, just is, is sort of a limiting factor to some degree. So if you're here, if you're a part of the Kingdom Death community, if you're excited about seeing some more content here on the channel, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. We are working on getting more and more Kingdom Death here. I promise it's just taken a little bit of work. All that being said, let's go ahead and slide uh, these items over to the side so we have all the room we need to go ahead and start opening Kingdom Death. Now this box is iconic for me, core game written right down there on the side, item number one, a net weight of something like 20 pounds or so. Uh, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Now like always, I'm gonna go ahead and cut a seam in all of this tape here so we can get access to it. And then once we have it opened up, I will be respectfully silent. Now the question is, how do you get a box this size out? And I think the, uh, the only appropriate way is to just sort of start tipping it over. Whew. 
Hello, beautiful Kingdom Death. Now this is the back side of the box. You can see that it is mature 17 plus. Very accurate. I would even say maybe like 27 plus. I just turned 27, so that's relevant. Uh, one to four players. Includes a variant rules for up to six. Don't play Kingdom Death with six. Uh, that's just kind of ridiculous. Some beautiful artwork here on the back, but the most iconic part of this game is going to be this, uh, this silhouette of the Watcher and this black sort of uh, velvet box. It's not really velvet, but it just sort of soaks in the light. I'm going to go ahead and cut a seam here on the side. And once again, after we get this cut, I will be respectfully quiet. There we are. The, uh, the iconic coverage already being marred by the touch of human hands. And uh, I'm preparing for, for one of the best moments of kind of this Kingdom Death experience. The, uh, the box lift, especially the first one, is one of the most satisfying feelings. It's such a heavy box along with a, a thick, heavy cardboard that nothing quite feels like this. You can just feel that weight pressing down. Now the box is uh, the box is really well made, like everything everything inside of here. So in the top here, we're going to have miniature assembly, and BuildKingdomDeath.com will have, I believe, reference guides now for nearly every piece that is in here. Uh, to start with in the community, they kind of left it up to you to figure out how the miniatures went together. There was a site called Vibrant Lantern, which was incredibly helpful in getting the community kind of up and running. Inside of this box here are going to be sprues upon sprues upon sprues. Just go ahead and dump all of these out. And I can set this box over into the side now. Now that box you don't need to keep a hold of. Uh, it's able to go in the garbage. You will be building all of these models and you will be filling out this core box. Um, what these sprues are going to be, you're going to have all the pieces necessary for every single piece of gear in this game, so you can customize and build your miniatures however you'd like. And then on top of that, you're going to have all the different bosses, so the Phoenix, the White Lion, the Screaming Antelope, the Watcher, the Gold Smoke Knight, uh, the Hand, uh, and the Kingsman. Uh, you're also going to have your starting survivors, you're going to have Old and Young Joe, um, and these are going to be the models miniatures that are sort of uh, more stylized than the ones that all fit together. So here we have the big wing of the Phoenix, we have more armor kits, um, and these are tiny little sprues. I'm talking like a wrist and an arm and a chest piece so that you can build and customize the armor however you'd like. Uh, it, is, it is not the easiest to build. Uh, here we have, looks like the Kingsman, more pieces of the Phoenix here. We'll just sort of pile these over to the side. Now this big bag here are gonna be all of the bases you need. Now make sure you're fitting the correct base to the correct model. For instance, this really big one here is going to be for the Phoenix specifically. Um, and your ones with the little uh, faces, the stone faces inlaid in the ground, you don't have quite as many of those. I believe there's five or 10. I think it might be 10 that are actually in this bag. So you wanna use those sparingly for some of your favorite miniatures. I usually use them for the starting survivors and then I have a few extra for hero builds. Uh, hero builds are where you take a campaign and you get a character that you really like at some point throughout the course of the campaign and you go ahead and build out their iconography, sort of a statue to their memory or their existence. They're not gonna survive, but Sometimes it's nice to have something to remember your last game through. So after that big box of miniatures, we come down here into the core game elements. The first thing we're gonna run into here is going to be this board. Now this is gonna be your timeline board and your hunt sort of tracker 
uh, board. The top here is when you're in your settlement phase. That's when you're building, developing, getting resources, getting ready to go back out onto the hunt. This is gonna walk you through the different stages of the game, just kind of helps you manage that paperwork a little bit. The second side of this here is going to be the hunt event. So this is where you put down different uh, sort of choose your own adventure or uh, roll and resolve events. And you're going to be going down this track in order to uh, catch up to the monster that you're hunting and hopefully defeat them in combat. Next, we're gonna come down to a big punch board here. All these little punch items are going to be uh, modifiers that exist throughout the course of the game. So let me go ahead and see if I can open a seam. So in the top here, we have priority target token, uh, rules clarification. We have that same board, just a little bit more self-contained here. I usually use this as opposed to this big flip one when I play. Um, we have endeavor tokens. Those are resources that you get that aren't renewable. So I'll set this down. And then these other tokens here are going to be stat modifiers. So you have plus, minus, damage, toughness, evasion, luck, speed, accuracy. You have your blood tokens, which is a mechanic that can kill you throughout the course of the game. These are gonna be double-sided because you need to indicate if you have plus or minus some of those modifiers. The reason these are in tokens instead of you know writing them on your paper is because there's some rules and mechanics that specifically deal with tokens. So if you get a token, you can discard it for a buff, you can use it for something else, you can kind of flip it so that it's a plus instead of a minus. Um, it is a rules mechanic into itself, and so it's important to keep track of these stats, not as uh, bonus stats or core stats, but specifically as tokens themselves. Next, we have a sheet of terrain. Terrain is gonna be how you build out your board. You'll see here, I'm about to pull out the actual game board, and this terrain is what gives it texture or flavor. Um, it is a really, really beautiful, uh, amazing illustration of this plane of stone faces uh, but along with that you need a little bit of pops of color so we have you know our ore our bug patch we have acanthus plants uh, these are things that you can actually interact with throughout each scenario so they modify the environment that you're hunting the creature in and giving you the opportunity to you know gain extra defense search for different items possibly resolve a different type of attack um, these are going to be black on the other side as well after that, we're going to lift off our main uh, our main player board here. I will open this up in just a second. I'm sure you've already seen a little bit of B-roll of it, uh, but it is this black, uh, kind of intricately designed and illustrated picture of stone faces. So we'll set this down to the side again. And inside this core box here, we're gonna have all of the cards, mechanics, components that go into, uh, go into actually playing the game. Now, this box is very wide. It's designed so that you can either sleeve everything or you can actually add in a large mix of expansions into this box. Now in my core game that I play a lot along with the, uh, the, the custom wooden box that I have, I've actually replaced a lot of these trays with other sorting options. Um, the tray works, but it's just not as convenient or uh, kind of nice as I would like it to be. Um, I like to be able to actually pull out different bits and pieces when I play the game to keep everything organized. So the top here, you're gonna have your survivor sheet. This is where you track their abilities, their damage, how much armor they have, their different modifiers. A lot of writing and erasing, a lot of paperwork goes into this game. I do have to say the community has improved upon this tracking. They actually have full pages. Uh, if you swing over to the Reddit or the BGG forums, you can find out ones that I personally find more efficient and useful when I go into playing this game. Um, so these are nice, but I think I've only ever actually used them once. I always kind of print out the fan created ones. Next, we're gonna have your survivor boards. Now these boards are gonna be the boards that your survivors use. These are the gear grids. So you're trying to build out a pattern of interlocking and connecting gear. So if I have a headpiece that connects to a chest piece that connects to a weapon through different colored indicators, uh, I potentially get some sort of bonus or some sort of effect. Like, a full leather outfit will allow me to re-roll a die to try to save survival, which is a rare resource throughout the game. You also have your survivor stats over here on the side. So you have your basic action, you have your move, you have sort of the turn order, everything like that. And you have the stats for Fist and Tooth, which is always 280. Uh, so if you lose all your weapons throughout the course of the game, uh, you can always just punch them. I, I, th I think that'll work. 
Uh, finally, we're gonna have our settlement record sheet here. Now, once again, just like the survivor sheets, I actually print out a custom version of this uh, based on what expansions have integrated into the core game and uh, well, really just every time I'm playing. There are better ways to track this and throughout a overwhelming amount of playtesting, redesigning, community involvement, um, it takes more paper. So when you print out the community made settlement record sheet, you're actually dealing with you know, three pages at a time instead of one. Uh, so it would have been harder for Kingdom Death to print and produce those, but I, I really think they're worth it. These are usable. They're just not my favorite way to interact with the game. Setting that over to the side again. As we continue to dive down, we have our dice here. We have a wide range of D10s with a Lantern 10 on top. And then we also have our D6s with custom uh, hit location indicators. So you roll a D10 to resolve attacks, attack attempts, everything like that and you roll a d6 to see where you got hit. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, we have our story events. Um, this little stack here will happen every time you come back to the village for the most part, and these will be the script that tells you uh, sort of the narrative upon arrival with the resources that you've collected. These are horrible. These, uh, not, not bad, like they're not, they're not bad. I, I, I really, I really like them. I like flavor text. I like the story. I always draw murder for some reason. It's just a thing that, uh, that seems to happen. We also are going to have our settlement locations here. This pack of cards here is going to indicate, uh, the items that you can build. So you're going to have the lantern horde, the barber surgeon, the organ grinder. Um, these are the cards that develop your society or your civilization and you're, uh, you're able to craft different types of gear and take different actions off of them during the settlement phase. Uh, these cards here are just gonna be dividers for all of these cards. They are a little bit too tall. So what I did is I took a, uh, a top loader, a hard card sleeve, and cut it exactly to fit the size of these cards. That way, when the game board goes back on top of this, you don't actually crush the top of them. Uh, they have a tendency to kind of get folded over. Instead, you have a hard surface for the game board to rest on. So a little note for any of those people trying to figure out or just recently opening the game. We have another little pack of dividers for our gear cards. Now, these stacks of cards here are going to be all of the different items you can build throughout the course of the game. And that, that is a ton of different resources and items. You can see here on the top, a few of the little uh, color codes, and that's how they kind of connect on your gear grid. But each item has its own custom keywords, specifications, attack, strength, ability, armor, defense, modifiers, ways that it connects together. So this is a big part of Kingdom Death, solving this puzzle, figuring out what gear to build and what items or units work the best to maximize what you have on your board or what your character is utilizing. Uh, this is this is a part of the game that a lot of people just really, really enjoy. So uh, these, these piles of gear cards, that's what they are. I'll set them down to the side. We have the rule book here. Now I'm sure I'm showing you some footage of this, um, just the, the illustrations, the art throughout this entire book, but this is gonna be your, your game book and then also your narrative story book, right? So in this, you're going to have the first 30 or 40 pages are gonna be the rules to playing Kingdom Death. Start with the intro story. It sets you up, it walks you through that first prologue fight, it gets everything um, set up for the first few hours of the game and from there you can build off and expand after that, you will want to sit down and read, you know, the first 15, 20 pages of core rules and modifiers for the game, just so you kind of understand the flow of it. The rest of this book, the rest of this hardcover book, is actually going to be the different encounters you have, the setup specifications for each sort of hunt, uh, story elements, things that you resolve, tables you roll on. Um, there's just there's just a lot of really good stuff here. So I'll set this down to the side, and then finally, all of these stacks of cards are uh, are gonna be the cards that control, for the most part, the cards that control uh, your creatures, their AI systems, their personalities, the way they interact when you're actually hunting them, uh, and then also things like armor, gear grids, disorders, terrain. Um, this, is, this is the heart of the game. 
I know it has fancy miniatures and then some really, really beautiful art, but when you come down to it, these packs of cards here dictate the way the the mind or the brain of the game works and are probably the most ingenious or innovative part of this game. Now, in my core game, I have all of these beautifully sleeved, uh, you know, ready to be used. And uh, in this copy, I'm going to keep them uh, still here in shrink. I have B-roll of everything to show you, which I'm sure you're seeing as you resolve. That is gonna be the insert tray here. Like I said, I normally go ahead and replace this insert tray with something like a broken token insert or some of the ones you can grab off Etsy. Um, and then these type of things, I will uh, probably store in my core game, um, just kind of keep them organized there. So that is where we are. Let me go ahead and pull out the, uh, oh, first set that down to the side. Let me go ahead and pull out the game board here, just so I can show you exactly how beautiful this game board is. Oh. I've spent so many hours staring at this vast black expanse. So, in this game board here, you're going to have, oh, this sheet, which is just a tracker for your AI systems in your deck. But you see here, so you have this really, really beautiful, uh, this kind of illustrated graphic here on the top, the little uh, skirting kind of fading to black uh, stone faces. And then you set this next to your board here. This is gonna be where you keep track of all your cards. So you have your AI deck, your hit location, basic action for each creature, your wound stack, all of your little token modifiers, and then traits or mood modifiers. Those are gonna be personalities that each creature can develop on their own. Uh, that that make them more fun to play. I think. I I think that's what they do. Um, the game uh, the game is fun to play. The moods and traits are are a little ruthless. But everything in this game is a little ruthless. So that's going to be a unboxing of Kingdom Death Monster. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully it's been the highest quality unboxing video. Um, a little bit of an overview there of the components and mechanics and everything that goes in. I, I wanted to get this open so I could get it into the new box. I thought it would be fun to go ahead and just save this on camera because it's not a thing that uh, people get to do very often. And along with that, uh, opening up Kingdom Death is not a thing that people get to do multiple times, typically. This is sort of a rare experience to reopen something that I'm just so nostalgic about. So thank you for joining me. Swing over to the Cardboard Wizard to check out these, uh, these incredible inserts here. I will be showing you how they're used later on. We'll probably do some gameplay and stuff with them included. Along with that, swing over to my reboxing video or subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for my reboxing video where I stick uh, this game into a custom made uh, wooden Kingdom Death box, which is actually handcrafted by a member of the Kingdom Death community. So thank you for joining us. Whatever you do though, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. We'll see you next time. Thank you.